Welcome back to my podcast. My name is Mrs. JBJ. I'm back to my channel. This is your girl, Mrs. JBJ. What is happening? What is going on? Welcome, welcome. And if you're new, go ahead and like, subscribe, and share. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for everyone who's supporting my channel. Everybody who's leaving comments. Thank you. I appreciate you. You have no idea. Let's get right into it. So we are reviewing Basketball Wives Orlando. So Neek and her mom is chilling at Neek's and Dwayne's home. And she's in town because, you know, Neek's been going through a lot. Dwayne just recently lost his brother. And then Neek is going through it with Milan, like telling all her business. They supposed to be like besties. And Milan is just not being a good friend. So Neek is telling her mom everything that's going on and how Milan is just talking shit about her. And Neek mama is kind of shocked. Like, Milan was telling these girls that I'm the ugly friends, talking about all the shit that me and Dwayne done went through, just telling all my business to all these ladies, the ladies that me and her was fighting. Yeah, she done told them all my business. So I like Neek's mom. Neek's mom was telling her, you know what? Milan is young, a very young woman and has been through a lot. Maybe she just don't know how to be a friend. And when people don't know how to be a friend, they just want to fit in where they are and just do all kind of stuff, but not necessarily that they have bad intentions, right? So that's something Neek's going to have to figure out. Now, me personally her ugly i ain't feeling you mm -mm. you can't be my friend talking i'm the ugly friend um but also i think milan needs to be accountable because to call neek ugly or the ugly friend is wild <laughs> is wild like i wouldn't want young or not young i would not want to have a friend that's genuinely hating on me that's some hate to say that one of my friends is the ugly friends. Are you crazy? Who would say that? Now, telling her business, be like, girl, you know, Dwayne and Nico over there. Now, that's different. That's you just running off at your mouth, you know, just chatting like we do. But for you to, like, take jabs like the ugly friend, nah, I ain't feeling that, mom. I don't know about that. But, you know, Nick is listening to her mom. She's taking advice from her mom. Nick was like, you know what, mom? Okay, I hear you. Um, that's possibly something that I can do. I'm not going to give up on Milan. And she was like, but if she keeps showing you who she really is and, and it does come from a bad place, then yeah, you're going to have to reevaluate your relationship with Milan. But I do feel like you guys need to get together and try to talk this out. And Nick was like, you know what? I'm going to do that. So Nikki finally meets up with Megan. This is after megan's event where she invited four y'all remember she invited four and y'all know four is nikki's ex-boyfriend so she meets up with megan trying to really confront her like girl why the hell you had my ex-boyfriend at your event in orlando like that's shady what's going on and of course you know megan was like i know i should have told you in advance but it was just about me. Me and four have been talking for a while. I've been wanting him on the podcast. This was just perfect timing. I promise you, Nikki, this has nothing to do with you. And then Nikki, of course, forgive Megan. was like, oh, I get it. But the next time, can you please give me a heads up? Because me and the ladies, we all thought it was messy. And then Megan was like, yeah, I know, because I heard Ashley talking cash shit about me. I heard her in the audience talking shit, and I'm going to get in her ass. And Nikki was like, yeah, she was, and she was being shady. Um, But also, they just felt, they was really taking up for me. Okay, y'all. Okay, basketball-wise. I told you I gave y'all a pass on that last episode, but for y'all to have a whole meetup, with Nikki confronting Megan about four, who is on a whole different reality show. And Nikki ain't talk about one basketball player, not one. And Megan ain't talk about no basketball player. She's talking about tattoo artists. So for y'all to even create a whole scene with Nikki confronting Megan about four. So is this basketball wise or is this basketball slash black ink? 
because Nikki still ain't talk about one basketball player that she dated. Like, what are we doing here? And Megan, I digress. Y'all know how I feel about Megan. Let's move on. Morgan's sister is in town because y'all know Morgan is going through it. She has sent her kids to her mom in Atlanta because her husband found out, her ex-husband, sorry, found out where she was and been sending her like court documents, child support documents to modify and change. So she's really been going through it. So her sister is there to support her. And this episode was kind of heavy because Morgan is going through it. She said, so she talking to her sister about being disappointed in her husband and how she just thought that they was going to be together forever, how he has abandoned her kids. Like she never imagined him not wanting to have a relationship with his kids and how that's really taken a toll on her because she done went through that and her having suicide thoughts. Oh, that breaks my heart every time I hear about that. Because it's so many of us that are just tapping out, y'all. It's so real. Like, we're just giving up on ourselves. And I don't want to diminish anything that somebody has experienced in their childhood, their adult. I don't want to minimize that for anyone. But when I tell you, like, I don't even know what to say. All I know is that get help and get help soon and you do have a bigger purpose and nothing lasts forever all things pass this too shall pass it makes my heart heavy to hear how I many we hear all the time I've been seeing Taraji P. Henson just struggling with her mental health um, Melissa Ford I just heard her on a podcast it's so many of us that's just like what why am I here what am I doing you are here for a purpose and life can get real crazy but sometimes you gotta quiet that noise down and get the fuck off social media get off of it and tap into yourself it's okay to love on yourself sometimes you gotta love on yourself just to get out of shit sometimes you have to encourage yourself just to get out of stuff so it is so heavy to see these women just really have suicidal thoughts like i'm done um is it like you got beautiful kids and Imagine how that's going to affect them. It's going to affect them. It is. No doubt about it. <laughs> it's life changing. So when you have babies and you choose to have these beautiful babies that depend on you and you just want to tap out of here, even if you don't have any kids, yo, just love on yourself. Just get in a corner, get in a closet and just love on yourself and don't get out of that until you feel safe. Your job can wait. Your family can wait. Everybody can wait until you get peace. Get that peace around that peace. And just, just ask God, just, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do it. But just get in that space that I, I just need to love on me. And just have that intimate relationship with God. You know, it bothers me so much. And you can just see it all over Morgan. You can just see it. And her sister is really concerned about her. But she also is just genuinely disappointed. I don't think this is a moment in reality TV. I think this is real. I think this is real time, something that's really happened. And for her baby sister to come check on her was amazing. And for her to just talk about it, right? For her to be vulnerable enough to just talk about it in front of a camera, um, you helping so many women, Morgan, because so many people are going through that. But girl, this too shall pass. This too shall pass. So she talks about that. Her sister just like, I'm here for you. We're loving on you. I'm going to stay here until you get out this dark place. So I love, love, love that about Morgan in this scene because we all knew something was going on. Because when I tell you that girl had so much anger up in her. And some of these things, she can't even function because her anger take over. So I'm glad they were able to show it. And I'm pretty sure she's going to, it's no way she she's not going to look back at this on the other side and like, you know what? I'm here today, you know? And I love that. So Ashley meets up with Danielle. 
because she wants to invite Danielle to her and her husband basketball camp. They are putting on an event for kids on the spectrum. And Danielle Coach is also part of this event. And he really want them to invite Danielle. Like, this would be good. Danielle's trying to get back in basketball. She's trying to build her brand. And doing this for the community would be great for Danielle and to distract her for everything that's going on with Rashad. So Ashley was like, you know what? It's really about the kids. I'm going to reach out. So she reached out to Danielle. They're meeting up. Danielle is really hesitant because she does have a loyalty to Morgan and Morgan can be catty and Morgan is always wanting you to choose. It's either me or them. It's me, me or Ashley. She always wants you to choose. Um, Danielle is the same way. So they both give off that energy like, no, it's either us or them. So, but Dania is definitely feeling some type of way about meeting up with Ashley. But Ashley just tell her, hey, this is about the kids. This has nothing to do with our relationship. You know what? You can come out. We may not still like each other, but this is really about the kids. And your coach really wanted you to be a part of this. So I told him I would invite you personally because it really is no beef. And then Daniel, so Daniel finally opened up and was like, you know what? My son um, had developmental issues as well. I know what that's like. I would love to be part of this event. So, so Daniel agrees to be part of Ashley and her husband's basketball camp. So Lindsay is back. I like Lindsay. I did, like I said, I do want some more with her and her husband. I think they got a little something going on that we need to see more of. It's definitely better than Nikki and got dang gone on um, Megan. This Lindsay is a basketball wife. She is married to basketball. I love this. We need to see more of her. I don't know why she's not a main cast member because she definitely got some stuff going on. Like I said, in episode two or three, her husband came at her. Now, I know you probably said, why you want to see that? It's reality TV, y'all. Give me a break. I want to see it. So she doing her ginger reveal. Her, her husband, all her family members are there. So all the ladies show up. It's Morgan. It's Megan. It's Nikki. It's Neek. Who else? Mackenzie. They all show up there to support Lindsay. Lindsay is in her bliss. She excited. They asking her husband about, is he excited? He wants a little girl. He said, I'm very excited. This is their first baby. So they do the ginger reveal and Lindsay is having a little girl. Yay for Lindsay. So Ashley McKenzie Ashley, Mackenzie, Danielle, Malone, they all show up for Ashley Camp for all the kids that's on the spectrum. It was beautiful. Like I said, I do love when basketball wives implement doing something for the community. I love it when they did their cancer event. I'm loving because they're doing the kids on the spectrum because to hear Shawnee, Evelyn, Tammy, Jackie always saying we do so much for the community. We film it, but they never show it. It never makes it to the show. So I'm, gl so I'm glad this type of things are making it to the show, especially on Orlando. So they're enjoying each other. No drama, no side shit. Everyone is getting along. They're really supporting these kids. They look happy. It was a successful event for Ashley. So I love that for them. So Neek is finally meeting up with Milan. She got to confront Milan about calling her the ugly friend and talking shit about her and Dwayne's relationship. And at first, they was all laughing, being all fake. And then Neek just was like, you know what, Milan? I got to be up front with you. You want to be my friend and you want us to go through the long distance relationship. You cannot be sitting around 
telling people what goes on in me and Dwayne's household. You cannot do that. You cannot discuss my business with other women. And you cannot call me the ugly friend. So first Malone was like, no, the ladies are hating on me. They just hate our relationship. They hate that we're so close. And Neek was like, I get it. But they knew personal things about me and Dwayne relationship that nobody knows about. So you got to take accountability. You did say some things because there's no way that these ladies would know any of this. And for you to say that I'm the ugly friend is wild. Wild. And Milan was still deflecting like, no, they just hating on me. And then I guess she looked at Neek and saw the disappointment in Neek. And she was like, you know what? I'm going to take accountability. You're right. I shouldn't be discussing anything with anyone. Even if I'm just popping my shit and I don't have any bad intentions, you're right. I was wrong. Thank you, Milan, for at least being accountable because it wasn't flying because you really was saying things that they would have no idea unless you told it. That's just the truth. So she had to come clean about that. She finally did. And, you know, Neek just stressed like, no, if you want to be a friend, you can't talk shit about me. I don't have friends that talk shit about me. I don't have friends that feel a certain way about me and do something else behind the scenes. I'm not with it. I don't like it. I'm not tolerating it. And then Malone's like, you know, I love you. We've been knowing each other for years, blah, blah, blah. So let me get y'all some behind the scenes YouTube street tea. And because like I said, Neek is a superstar on YouTube. Neek has probably about 2 million or close to 2 million subscribers. I don't know the exact numbers, but I know it's close to 2 million. And so Milan and Neek are cool in real life. So on, so this was exposed a couple months ago. And a lot of you guys know who watch Neek's channel, but the people who don't know, and only watch Basketball Wives. So Neek goes to Malone's birthday party. This was the time that Malone was actually dating a basketball player. So they have this birthday dinner. They're hanging out. They end up, I think, at Malone's house. And for some reason, I don't know how, I don't know why, but all this drama kicks off because they were saying that Neek was hooking up with Milan's boyfriend in the bathroom. Yes, it's true. That's what they were saying. That was a rumor. And at the time, Milan's friends was coming after Neek and was like, Neek is not your friend. That bitch ain't shit. She was in the bathroom with your man making out. And Dwayne was in another country because he played D-League. So he wasn't even in the States. So they was all on live. I mean, just spit, the tea was just spilling over. And it was this big old thing. And Milan and Neek like fell out. And that Neek was really making out with Milan's boyfriend. I don't know all of it because I'm not going to be figuring out everybody live. And it was all messy. And then Neek was denying it. And then her and Milan became friends. And then Milan friends was mad with her because she took Neek's side. So it was just so much. And honey, I ain't got time for that. But that's what basketball wives need to be focused on. Because like I said, and Neek and Dwayne always got something going on. They break up. They get back together. He cheat. It be some mess going on. So I'm like, basketball wives, why y'all not? It's not giving. I need y'all to match that energy. I need them producers to deep dive in this shit with Neek and Milan because I'm telling y'all, Neek got some shit going. And y'all got her real laid back on basketball wives. Now, that's the basketball wife I want to see. I digress. Y'all go on YouTube. Y'all go down that rabbit hole and figure it out. But that's some TT. That's some true shit that went down. I think it was this summer. Okay, I digress. But they're back friends on Basketball Wives Orlando. Danielle is riding around in her SUV because she's so stressed out because Rashad is taking her through it. She said that they got in some type of altercation or some type of disagreement via email. He called her the aggressor and threatened to file a restraining order. So she all stressed out. 
So he wants to get a restraining order so he can have custody of the kids to do what? Avoid paying child support. So she going through bullshit with Rashad over child support. And she mad. And she mad. She going through it. So she's just trying to call her bestie Morgan. Morgan's not picking up. She's like, why Morgan not picking up? Ever since I did this event with Ashley, so Danielle think that Morgan is avoiding her because she supported Ashley and was at her camp. And y'all know that, like I said, Morgan is always like, choose a side. You can't hang out with Ashley and hang out with me. I'm your friend. I'm your girl. So Danielle is like, I can't believe Morgan is being petty. She is ignoring my call. Now, I think Morgan is not picking up because we all know Morgan is going through hell right her sister is in town Morgan is having suicidal thoughts she's in a dark place so that's really why Morgan is not putting up but Danielle is in her own head she's not feeling Morgan at all so that is basketball wives Orlando and this is episode eight friends close enemies closer uh what do I think about basketball wives Orlando it was okay it was good. So I'm glad that Neat finally showed up and making these ladies accountable because she gave Nikki a whole pass for throwing her under the bus. But I'm glad she confronted Milan. Um, I do like that we were able to see um, another side of Morgan and see what Morgan is really going through. I hope she finds some healing. Um, but yeah, it was a good episode. I will give it an A. I think that um, Basketball Orlando is solid. You know, they're solid. They giving us exactly what we need. So I am enjoying Basketball Wives Orlando. Overall, I would give this episode a seven. Yep, I think that's fair. But it's a lot of more episodes to go. And we're just getting into it. So, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate you. Thank you for supporting my channel. And if you're new, go ahead and subscribe like and share and if you're just here to watch go ahead and subscribe why not come on hook your girl up hook your girl up and guess what guys i will see you on the next episode peace jay i'm going to be talking